Hey everyone! In today's video, we'll make our Raspberry Pi show the temperature on an LCD screen. We'll also connect it to an API. So in this video, first I'll show you the architecture of everything we'll do in today's demo. Then I'll show you all the hardware I'm using, such as my kit, the model, and all kinds of stuff. And finally, we'll do an interactive demo. As part of the demo, we'll put together the hardware. Then we'll write our code to get the temperature from the sensor and write it on the screen. And finally, we'll connect it to an API to send us a text message whenever the temperature gets too hot. So first, let's see the architecture of what we'll do in the demo. So here we have a Raspberry Pi. That's the main hardware that's connected to the temperature sensor and the LCD screen. The temperature sensor provides us with live temperature data, and again, it's connected to the LCD screen. And through the power of Python code, we can continuously read the temperature data, convert it to Fahrenheit, and write it on the LCD display. If the temperature rises to more than 80 degrees, our program will also call an API through Azure Logic Apps to connect to Twilio, a service that sends text messages. Now let me show you all the hardware I'm using. So I'm using a Raspberry Pi sensor kit from SunFounder, and they provide a little book that shows you all the mini projects that you can do with the sensors. They also have a GitHub repository so that you can download their code on your Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, which is the latest and the greatest model as of now. It even has 4 GB of RAM. So the components in the sensor kit I'm going to use in this video are the LCD screen and the analog temperature sensor. I'm also going to use the PCF8591 module, and I'll explain what all of these are in the demo. So here are all the components we'll use for the circuits. Firstly, we have the actual Raspberry Pi. Attached to it is the camera module, but we won't use that in this video. And this red thing is the GPIO, or the General Purpose Input Output Extension Board. It connects the Raspberry Pi to the breadboard. The breadboard, it lets us connect all the modules without having to solder them. You just have to put these little pins into the holes. And here we have some extension cables. These just help us connect all the modules together. So I'll put those to the side for now. And here are the actual modules. The first one is the LCD screen. This will print us the temperature on the LCD screen. The next one is the analog temperature sensor. This continuously gives us the temperature data. You can alternatively use a thermistor, but the ATS or the analog temperature sensor is way more efficient, which is why I use it. And lastly, we have the ADDA converter or the PCF8591. It's just a data acquisition device and it helps us push the data, the temperature data to the Raspberry Pi. So those are all the modules. And SunFounder provides some sample code to work with the sensors. And I'm going to reuse and add on to some of the code in order to get the final outcome. So first, I'll put together the circuit for the analog temperature sensor they provided. Alright, so this is the circuit done for the temperature sensor and the PCF8591. So these are the two modules we connected. And right now, if I run the temperature sensor program, it should work but I also want to connect the LCD module, so let me do that. So I've connected two of the four LCD cables because they are overlapping. See these two brown and white cables from the PCF8591? They need to be in place of the LCD. So what I'll do is I'll just move these both up one. So I'll move these pins up one. Wait, I'll show you. Okay, they were at the bottom first, but now I just moved them up one so that I can replace them with these cables. Okay, there's one. And there's the other. So now we connected all the circuits, so now we can write the program. So that was the circuits, and now I'm in my Raspberry Pi. I've already pre-made an empty Python file that we can edit so that we can make the display display the temperature. So I'm opening up VS Code so that I can edit it and let me open up my file and here it is displaytemp.py alright it's empty now but I'm gonna paste in some imports uh, here we go paste okay so we want our temperature to be in a decimal format so it's more precise so we'll import decimal up here 
We're connecting all of our components to the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi, so I'll import GPIO here. And the PCF8591, we talked about that before, so we're importing that also. Math and time, that just lets us run some math functions. And finally, the LCD1602, that's just so that we can print stuff on the LCD. So next, as part of this setup, I'll say GPIO.setMode, and then in parentheses, GPIO.board. What this will do is it'll reference all of the pins using the breadboard numbers instead of anything else. Now I need to initialize all the pins. How I do that is I'll just paste in the code, but don't worry, I'll explain it. So we're defining a function, and it's called setup, and then it's saying adc.setup. ADC is just the PCF8591, which we talked about before, and it's saying 048. What this line does is it sets up the analog converter, and the next line, it just sets the pins to inputs, and the last line initializes the LCD address and the background light. This is the address, and this is the background light. Okay, down here I'm going to define another function. So I'll say def, and then I'll call it loop. Oh no, it's supposed to be parentheses because it's a function, and then colon. Inside of that, I'm going to make a while loop since we need to go through the temperature data each second. So I'll say while true, and inside of the while loop, I'll paste in this code, and I'll explain it. So it, it's saying the analog value equals, and then it's getting the analog temperature data from the PCF8591. It's just reading that. And these four lines, it just converts the analog temperature data into Celsius. But we want to make it Fahrenheit, and we'll see how to do that in a second. So right now it's storing the temperature data in a variable called temperature. And if I tried to print temperature right now, it would give me a long list of decimal numbers because it's being very precise. But I want to round those decimals to the hundreds place, let's say. So what I'll do is I'll change the value of temperature, temperature, and that'll be equal to, I'll use a round function, and I'll say round temperature, and the last argument will be one. So it'll round it to one decimal place. Right now we have our temperature data and it's rounding it to one decimal place, but it's in Celsius. I want to convert that to Fahrenheit. How I can do that is by making a variable. I'll call it Fahrenheit. And for the value of it, I'll say temperature. I'll use the formula for Celsius to Fahrenheit, which is the Celsius temperature times 1.8 plus 32. So how I can do that is I'll say temperature, which is our existing variable here, but this is Celsius. So I'll say temperature times 1.8, and then outside of the parentheses, plus 32. This will convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit. And the last thing we have to do is print the Fahrenheit temperature onto our LCD screen. How I can do that is by saying lcd.write, and then our text. So I'll first say 0, 0. This will tell the Raspberry Pi that I want to print whatever text I want on the first line of the LCD screen. Then, in single quotes, I'm going to say temp and then a colon so that we're telling it that this is the temperature. And then I'll use curly braces because I want to format the temperature nicely. Okay, and then after the curly braces, I'll say F. So outside of the single quotes, I'll write dot format because I want to format our temperature nicely. And then inside of the format, and then in parentheses, Fahrenheit. This will print our Fahrenheit temperature on the LCD screen. And now before we run our program, we'll have to do two more things. The first one is right now it's doing all of this stuff. It's reading the temperature and printing it until the loop is not true anymore. So what I want to do is make a little break, maybe one second or half second. How I can do that is saying time.sleep. This is why we imported time at the beginning. And then 0.5 or 1 for 0.5 seconds or 1 second. Now, since Python is interpreted from top to bottom and we don't want any of the above lines to be executed first, we want it to start from here. So let me scroll down and let me paste some code. This will be out of the while loop. So let me paste this here. 
It's just saying if name equals main, try setup and loop function, which we defined up here, except keyboard interrupt pass. Now we can run our program and see if it works. Since we want to see the temperature on screen and on the LCD screen also, I can add a print statement. So I'll just say print and then Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay, so now I'll just save this and we can run it. All right, now we can run our code. So I'll go to terminal and I'm already in the directory I want to be in. So I'll say sudo python3 and then the file name. So in this case, it's displaytemp.py. Displaytemp.py, here we go. So if I press enter, then it's already showing the temperature on the LCD screen and it's also printing it on this screen here. And if I put my finger on the temperature sensor, then it should increase 75 instead of 74 now. Yes, yeah, 75, 76 even. So now if I take it off, and let's say if I blow on it, then it should decrease. Yeah, it's back to 74 now. Okay, that worked. Now we can make it run an API. In order to call an API, I'm gonna have to import another package called requests. So after importing the LCD, I'm gonna say import requests. This will let us call an API. So I'll go back down to the code and I'm gonna create an if command here. So after the print Fahrenheit, I'm gonna say if Fahrenheit, no, oh, that's not how you spell it, Fahrenheit, if that is greater than let's say 75 degrees, then we want to call the API saying too hot. So if the Fahrenheit variable is greater than 75, then we'll say requests.get and then the URL of our API. So now let me go to the URL here, Logic Apps Designer. Um, I already made, I already pre-made a Logic App so that we can run our API effectively. And if you want another video on Logic Apps, I already made that, I'll put a link in the description. So now let me copy this and I'll go back to Raspberry Pi. Now I can paste it in our requests.get. Okay, so it's saying if Fahrenheit variable is greater than 75 degrees, then requests.get and then our Azure Logic app, which just sends my dad a text message saying too hot. All right, now let's run it. So I'll just save this and I will go to my terminal. Now I can run the same code, sudo python3 display temp.py. Okay, so it's showing the temperature on our LCD screen and on the screen. So it's 73 degrees now. If I put my finger, it's going 74, 75 even. And there, if you heard it, it sent our notification. And yes, it's saying too hot in the text message. Okay, that worked. But as you can see in the LCD display, it's saying the temperature 74 degrees F and then it's saying 000. Let's fix that problem. All right, so let's get back to the code so that we can fix it. Right now, on the LCD display, it's saying F000. That's because we formatted it wrong. What we have to do is say plus and then just a bunch of spaces. So what it'll do now is it'll show F and then it'll format our Fahrenheit right here. And then it'll just show a bunch of spaces, which really does nothing, but it takes out those zeros. Okay, and another problem it did was it just spammed me with messages once it was 74 degrees. How we can stop that is by saying, inside the if command, I can just say print and then text message sent. And then after that, it'll send us the text message here. This will just tell me that, hey, uh, it sent the text message so I can take my finger off. All right, now we can run it again. Okay, now let's save it and I'll go to terminal to run it. Okay, I'll just run the same code, display temp.py. So it's showing 74.12. And now if I put my finger, first of all, it took out those zeros in the LCD display. If I put my finger there, it says, it says 75 and it's showing text message sent. And there, it sent me a text message. Okay, that worked. Okay. That was how to connect a temperature sensor to Raspberry Pi and program it to do a couple of things. In this case, we connected it to an LCD display and programmatically sent out a text message too. 
We have numerous use cases to use temperature data and do various other things, and we'll try some of them in my future videos. Until then, happy coding! Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any Raspberry Pi or temperature sensor questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz, and until then, you can learn anything.